A number of other activities are ongoing in the greater Accra region. We virtually launched the permit processing system so that if you require a permit, you sit in your house, go to the database, and then uh, fill in the form requiring permit for your building or however that you are. A database that will have uh, names of companies that can help you if you want to uh, get in, in touch with some companies to help you fill your form. It's all there. So for Great Cry, we started with, uh, we started with the uh, municipalities and uh, metros and we are planning to work on, they've started working on 10. We are working on 10 as of now. And this has facilitated the process of getting uh, resources on that matter. All this money that we have transferred to the assemblies through the efforts. You don't transfer any or get assemblies to get money by just uh, doing business as usual. You have to put in an effort. You have to build their capacity. You have to provide the resources and guide them to do that. So we've guided them through digitization, we've guided them through various training, we've guided them through monitoring, and even sometimes coaching. They have been able to get results, and also taking that initiative to ensure that what is due them goes to them, like the common fund, the net transfer increasing over the period. And they've been able to initiate 4,686 sub-projects, and of this, 2,682 have been completed. And this includes educational infrastructure, health, water, sanitation facilities, and other uh, areas. They themselves will decide on whatever they want to do with the funds that is. And every, every year, they put their annual plans, consult with the local communities, identify the areas that they want to do. Now, let me move on to rural development. Rural development key for the development of this country and for service delivery. We developed a policy which guides and coordinates service delivery and investment in rural communities. This is approved by cabinet and we are implementing it. We have had a consistent a rural policy, a coordinated rural development policy in this country since 1969. Since Buzia's government had a rural development covenant. So this time, we have developed a rural development policy. And it's binding not only on the Ministry of Local Government and Rural, but all sector ministries. And periodically, we will coordinate and provide a report on how well we are doing on rural development. This policy seeks to modernize agriculture from rural, for, for rural growth and development, provide quality socioeconomic infrastructure, maximize the potential rural areas towards rural enterprise development and industrialization, promote sustainable management and utilization of natural resources, promote financial inclusion of our rural communities, and strengthen participation of our communities in the decentralized governance system. We have developed the uh, program and we've also set in place activities to ensure that the rural development policy is implemented. One such program that we have is what we call Ghana Productive Safety Net Project. And this has been designed to, uh, to emphasize on rural development work. And it's implemented with a 16 million funding support from World Bank. So far, we have about, about the districts have identified about 340 sub projects. And this is delivered through what we call Labor Intensive Public Works Program. The 73 small F dams, 60 ferros of about 3.5 kilometers in length each. And then we have about 200 and climate change interventions. This is done through plantations of various crops that are designed. Some are doing coconut, some are doing cashew and various uh, areas that they decide. It's also a climate change intervention. In under the labor intensive public works program, they, we allow the districts to identify people, sensitize the community, and get workers to work in the field. 
Can you show me show some of the pictures of the workers at work? Yes, for example, this in Sola Kalba, they are doing a dump. And they, uh, they, they get the stones. The stones are not huge, which is a picture that's making. They get the stones, and then the tractor, the contractor supports the work, goes to collect the stone, and then they arrange it at the, uh, at the dam side. This is a road project. Women are engaged, they work on the road, and they are paid 12 Ghana cities a day. 12 Ghana cities a day. So if you multiply that by 30, you get over 300 rupees for them. I went to some village and they told me that now our market is full. The women in the village are using the money now to trade. They get their 300, uh, over 300 cities every month, so they use it to trade. This is a road completed in Ofinso. The previous one, let me see, the previous one, the road was in one municipal. Yeah, it's one municipal, but a village under the one municipal assembly. They are doing their road there and others. Then we, we have the plantations too. They do what we call, go back please. Go back. They do uh, nurseries. The assemblies do some nurseries and then supply tree plants to all who are interested in certain plantations. And this it's also going on. as I indicated, we have about 200, 209 plantations already established in, in this in these areas. And for those getting the doing the work involved in the labor intensive, we have 20, generated employment for 29,959. Out of this, 18,508 are females, constituting 62%. And then males are 11,451, constituting 38%. The women need the money more than the men. So we are targeting females. We are targeting them. And we've paid out a total of 19, 19 million. Through these wages for the period 2019 and 2020, we've paid 19 million directly to vulnerable persons who do not have work and want to work to earn an income to support themselves, either their household or to engage in business. We've paid out 19 million. Under the program for, show the coconut seedlings, under the program on uh, working on illegal, so ensuring that supporting the fight against illegal mining. The Ministry of Local Government, in collaboration with support from the Interministerial Committee on, against illegal mining, we are working on planting vegetation along the river bodies, the river basins. We, got the assemblies to support with coconut seedlings through our project, but also through the assemblies themselves. And we are also working with Agritate, a civil society organizing to support in this exercise. So far, we've planted trees along the uh, river Pra, uh, coconut seedlings, river Pra, five kilometers on both sides in Shama district. This was quite inspecting the, the planting along the river Pra. So you can see me at the DC and some of the workers just along the river Pra. We've done five miles on both sides. And then at Wasa East, Wasa East, we've done five miles along the river Pra. This week, we are starting with three streets along the river uh, Brim in the eastern region. And we have targeted 20. So seedlings are being supported with the Productive Safety Net Program. And some resources too from the Interministerial Committee on Against Illegal Mining. And we are targeting 20. We've successfully found two. We are starting another set of four and tend to have their seedlings ready, uh, seedlings ready to also start planting. This part of Rural Development Initiative. A key program under Rural Development I'd like to share with you is what we call the Planting for Export and Rural Development. And this is a collaboration between the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development 
and the Minister of and Agriculture, and of course, our municipal, metro, metropolitan municipal and district assemblies. This is more a rural coast program. It, we've rolled out under this program three crops developed and, that, uh, and planted. These are cashew crops. These are cashew, coffee, coconut, oil palm, mango, rubber, and share. And the key objectives are to improve upon the rural economy, establish a rural material base for His Excellency's vision of the centralized industrialization agenda, the 1D1, create jobs for the teaming youth, and mitigate the effect of climate change. Over the period, I will not take you through all that, but I will just indicate that we've done a lot of work in planting. For 2018, for example, we distributed, and these were not only distributed, we planted them, 9.2 million seedlings, cashew, oil, palm, coffee, coconut, mango. In 2019, 8 million distributed. In fact, 2018, it was distributed to 106 districts. They took the initiative. And in 2019, 146 districts planted 8 million seedlings. And for 2020, the target is 13 million, 13.8 million with 211 districts. This again, the nurseries, if I should pictures, the nurseries are done at the district level. The district assemblies do the nursery and then distribute the, the seedling. In fact, one district in Upper West was able to do 200,000 seedlings of cattle. And, have dist and they, they distribute freely to the uh, communities. And this one, an individual must be able to do one acre each. Yes. The, the picture before that, this is one district, this, actually district chief exactly distributing the seedlings. Okay. Okay, district chief executives. Di okay, district chief executive distributing the <laughs> distributing the seedlings. And the second one is Wild West. You can see that that one is not as green as the rest. It's also because of the environment. So the second one is Wild West. So we are doing a lot of work in our rural development. All the other areas that are taught construction of schools, construction of evidence. The concentration in the rural areas. One key thing that we have done that's worth uh, reporting on is the alternative livelihood program that we decided to use our community development institutes to train youth who otherwise were in Galamse. And we've trained 500 youth in various skills masonry, carpentry, electrical works, plumbing, and it's been a success story. 500 have completed and are out. In the schools now, we have 107 still training, 240 in the school, and 367 with master craftsmen in their community. Not all who want to be institutionalized. They don't want to be in school. Some stay with the master craftsmen in their community. And there are success stories. I would, I would like to uh, give you some of the success. Some beneficiaries of this program in Wasa is have produced and supplied face masks, those who were engaged in fashion and sewing, dressmaking. They have in, uh, supplied face masks. In fact, sometimes I buy face masks from them to take to my constituency. And some of them are also doing hand sanitizers and then doing, uh, doing the metal stands for the Veronica buckets. They are engaged in developing that and they are making some getting some good money out of that. Three trainees have uh, gone on to Takuradi Technical University to do higher national diploma. And then a trainee in Ashanti Nyinahe has also graduated from the Agona C. Some of them decided that they will continue and get the professional certificates. And some trainees from Mansun Konta in the Mansie South and some communities in the Mansie Amansie West and Amansie Central have been trained in soap making, bead works, flower collectionaries, and have started set up their own business. They are producing and selling. Many of them have set up their own businesses. In fact, those who did the electrical work, some of them were even employed by uh, VRA, and they are working in their communities. 
our the Pram on Social Investment Fund has also done a lot of just within the rural development areas. They have about 253 socioeconomic infrastructure in 21 districts. This includes chips, commons, clinics, maternity centers, semi discharge accommodation for teachers, nurses, mechanized balls, and markets with simple covers. We will have pictures some of the one uh, some of the markets in the program. They also created about 2,185 jobs and have paid at 14.4 million as remuneration to pers uh, persons that engage in their activities. And I've also been able to give credit totaling 17.4 million to 1,200 beneficiaries. This is a market that they constructed in Yamukru. <laughs> Yamranza. <laughs> Yamranza. 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 But there are... <laughs> the other one too is also there. The market too is also there. So, we have, we have one too in that community. For rural development, we have what we call Modernization of Agriculture in Ghana project, supported by CEDA, no, not Canada Development Agency, and uh, worked in link with the Ministry of the Agriculture. The Department of Agriculture is a decentralized department now. Some of the departments are decentralized. The Local Governance Act requires that about 11 departments be decentralized. 11 for the districts, but more even for the municipal and the, the metropolitan. So when it comes to agriculture now, the municipal government is interacting. In fact, one of my deputy ministers, the, uh, Collins, is dedicated to agri. So it works both with me and the minister for agriculture to ensure that this is done. This is a 40 million Ghana seed split, and it's transferred to the district. To, it's, trans, it's more that 40.6 million is transferred to regional departments of agriculture to monitor and supervise and ensure that all the plans are in place and they are implemented. And 100 million transferred to MMDAs for agricultural activities. This is included in their work plans, annual work plans, what they intend to do with agriculture, who, and then identify the groups. And the groups are registered with the district assemblies and supported with pools, with credit, and also with uh, processing equipment. We know women are engaged more in process, so we ensure that we provide the processing equipment. At the low level, too, we focus on projects that will enable them to mitigate the harsh conditions of climate change. So we have a number of pro uh, programs on climate change. One of them is the local climate adaptive living facility. And this, the district themselves decide what they need to do to deal with the issue of uh, climate change, combat the uh, issues around climate change, and we provide funding for them to implement them. So in the document, you see a number of programs that they have carried out in the various district. Another one is boosting green employment enterprise. And this is the European Union supporting to target is of migration. So we are focusing on Ashanti and Western region in areas that they have done a research and identified that there is migration, out migration, migration to Western world or other that is crossing the sea and all that. So we are intervening there with programs for climate, towards climate change. Last year, we had a very successful climate change summit of Africa to focus on the role of local governance in climate change. The emphasis on we can do all the policy at the national level, but if we don't weave it into what the look, action at the local level, we will not get the results. So we are drawing attention to the fact that all the policies and initiatives, that is the national determined contribution that we need to do, we need to refocus and look at what is happening at the local level. So, members of the media, 
we are doing well in the rural development front. We are not just looking at policies, but we are taking actions at the rural development front.